This book is called Coral Reefs. It's written and illustrated by Jason Chin, who is also the author of Redwoods. Here's our title page, and you can see it's by Jason Chin. It's called Coral Reefs. I like how she's pulling the book that we're about to read out of the shelves. And you'll see that the book is published by Roaring Book Press in New York. It's a Neil Porter book. For more than 400 million years, corals have been building reefs in the Earth's oceans. Corals may look like plants, but they are actually animals. Some are soft and sway back and forth in the water, while others, called hard corals, are rigid. Corals are made up of polyps, and most have hundreds of tiny polyps on their surface. Each polyp has stinging te tentacles that can extend to catch food. The polyps of hard corals build a limestone skeleton and live in indentations or cups along its surface. When a polyp is in danger, it can retract into its cup for protection. Hard corals are able to build their skeletons because of a remarkable partnership that they have with a type of algae. The algae live inside the polyp and working together, the polyp and the algae build the coral's skeleton. There are thousands of kinds of coral, and each species has a different shape and color. Some have intricate branches, while others grow in mounds on the ocean floor. When a coral's polyps die, they decay, but the skeleton remains and new corals can grow on top of it. Over hundreds of years, the coral piles up and spreads across the sea floor, eventually forming a living mountain called a coral reef. Corals may be small, but they are incredible builders. Coral reefs are the largest structures built by any animal on Earth. The Belize Barrier Reef is over 180 miles long. Coral reefs are home to thousands of plants and animals. There are so many species living in reefs that they are often called the cities of the sea. These aquatic cities grow in tropical waters around the world. They start close to shore and extend out into the ocean. Different parts of the reef have different kinds of animals. All of these animals interact in a complex web of relationships, and each has its own place in the system. Many of the relationships are between predator and prey. Corals eat plankton, tiny organisms that float through the water. The polyps use their tentacles to catch the plankton so they can eat it. But corals aren't just predators, they are also prey. Coral polyps retreat into their cups for protection, but that can't stop parrotfish. Parrotfish eat the algae that live inside the coral polyps. They use their special beaks to break through the coral skeletons and gobble up the polyps inside. The chain doesn't stop there. Parrotfish are preyed on by the larger fish like groupers and sharks. A series of species that each eat each other, like the coral, parrotfish, and sharks, is called a food chain. There are many different food chains on the reef, and all together they make up the food web. Many species use the reef for protection. As the coral grows, it creates many cracks and crevices in the reef that make perfect hiding places for small fish. Squirrel fish use the reef for protection when predators like the Nassau grouper are on the prowl. In addition to evading predators, each species must also find food to survive. Moray eels have slender bodies that are perfectly adapted for navigating the narrow nooks and crannies of the reef. Hiding fish may be safe from groupers, but they still have to watch out for hungry mores. The sandy area between the reef and the shore is called the lagoon, and it is covered by beds of seagrass. The lagoon plays an important role in keeping the reef healthy. Pufferfish and seahorses are common in the lagoon, Many young fish take shelter in the seagrass before growing up and moving on to the reef. Rays visit the lagoon to hunt for shrimp and snails, and sea turtles eat the seagrass itself. Beyond the lagoon, corals start to appear, marking the beginning of the reef. 
Groups of fish, called schools, can be found swimming over the reef. Fish swim in schools for protection, and sometimes different species, such as white grunts and porkfish, will swim together to make an even bigger group. By working together, schooling fish have a better chance at survival. Many species have developed unusual adaptations that help them survive. A scorpion fish barely resembles a fish as it sits on the seafloor waiting to ambush its prey. Predators had better watch out, too. On its back are spines filled with painful venom and effective defense. The frogfish goes fishing for its dinner. It changes color to blend in with the surroundings and dangles a special fin in front of its mouth to lure its prey close. When an unsuspecting fish takes the bait, the frogfish attacks, and it rarely misses. The frogfish is one of the quick quickest fish in the ocean. The common octopus has a few uncommon adaptations. It can change the color and the texture of its skin to blend in with any environment. Being a master of disguise is perfect for hunting and hiding. If a predator does happen to find it, the octopus has a backup plan. It releases a cloud of ink that confuses its enemy. The scorpion fish, the frogfish, and the octopus are just a few of the many reef species with unique adaptations that aid in their survival. Sometimes different species work together to help each other survive. Many large predators, like tiger groupers, have a partnership with tiny fish called neon gobies. The groupers visit the gobies for a cleaning. The gobies swim all over their customers, picking parasites and dead skin off their scales, gills, and fins. The groupers even let the gobies swim inside their mouths to clean their teeth. This arrangement works out well for everyone. The gobies get a free meal, and the groupers get a cleaning. At the end of the reef, the coral drops off dramatically into the depths. This is the reef wall and beyond it, the open ocean. The tropical waters bordering reefs have very little life in them, making food scarce. Coral reefs, on the other hand, are like oases in the desert. They are teeming with life and provide feeding grounds for visitors. The largest fish in the world, the whale shark, visits the Belize Barrier Reef every spring to feed on the microscopic eggs of the spawning reef fish. More than 4,000 kinds of fish and thousands of other species have been discovered in coral reefs, more than in any other part of the ocean. But that's not all. Scientists believe that reefs are home to millions of species that haven't been discovered yet. Remarkably, this enormous quantity of life is squeezed into just a fraction of the ocean. Coral reefs may be big, but they cover less than half a percent of the total ocean floor. With so many species living in such a small place, space, it is no wonder coral reefs are called cities of the sea. Like all cities, reefs are busy places and they are full of thousands of different relationships. Many of these relationships are between predator and prey, while others are partnerships that benefit everyone. All of these relationships make coral reefs some of the most complex ecosystems in the world. Each species has its place in the system and all of them depend on the reef builders for their home the corals. The threat to coral reefs. Corals have bright, beautiful colors, but their colors aren't all their own. Most corals are actually pale, and the colors we see come from the algae that live inside them. When corals are under stress, they expel their algae and lose their color. Without the algae, most corals will eventually die. This is called coral bleaching. It is becoming more and more common in the world's reefs. Corals are fragile creatures and they face many threats that cause them to bleach and otherwise imperil their survival. Some threats are natural, such as hurricanes. 
Others are human-made, such as pollution and overfishing. The biggest threat to reefs today is rising levels of greenhouse gases, caused in part by the burning of fossil, fossil fleet fuels. These gases are causing the world's oceans to warm up and become more acidic. Water is too warm. Water that is too warm causes coral bleaching, and water that is too acidic makes it very difficult for corals to build their skeletons. These threats are global, so the damage isn't isolated to a few corals here and there. Every coral in the world and all the animals that depend on them are in danger. The prospects for reefs are gloomy, but there is a bright side. You can be part of the solution. Here are some things that you can do to help. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Conserve water. Leave the fish where they are. Walk, bike, or take the bus. Educate yourself. This book is just a start. The more you understand about coral reefs, the better you will be able to help them.